Welcome to the Wildly Optimized Wellness Podcast. I am your host, Terea Rodriguez, and I'm joined by the lovely co-host, Evie Tackett. Both of us are functional diagnostic nutrition practitioners, and we love working with women from all over the world through our virtual programs, helping women not only feel better, but actually achieve that vibrant, no holds barred version of themselves they've been missing for a long time. And how we actually get there? Well, that is what this show is all about. Now, please keep in mind that this podcast is created for educational purposes only and should never be used as a replacement for medical diagnosis or treatment. And if you like what you hear today, we would love for you to hit that follow button, leave a review in Apple podcast, share with your friends and keep coming back for more. Let's start today's adventure, shall we? Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Wildly Optimized Wellness Podcast. Tere and I are super excited for this one. And I'm really excited because I get to kind of lead this one with asking Tere some questions about something that I utilize and we've had clients utilize and just, you know, the public utilize. And I think it was a really great time for us to talk about this because it does encompass a lot of the principles that we've talked about on this podcast in general. But I wanted to dive deeper with Tere of what the story is behind this particular product and, you know, this experience that she has curated for people. So, Terea, I want to talk about the Wellness Optimizing Journal that you created. Exciting. I'm excited yes. to talk about it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited for you to talk more publicly about it. Not many people know about it and they need to. So, this is definitely the start of like, hey, this thing exists. You need it in your life. It's very powerful. It's literally life-changing and it's just it's such a good resource that a lot of people are looking for something like this, but I don't want to talk about it because I didn't do it. I want you to share, you know, what, why did you decide to create it? And just, I guess, start with what is it and why did you decide to create this journal? Yeah. So the, what is it? It's called the wellness optimizing journal. What is it? It's not really a journal. It's not really a planner either. Um, It's a lot of self-discovery really. And um, so for those on the video, I've got it here in my hot little hands and you can see it's, ooh, and Evie's got even a prototype copy. Look at that. Yeah, that's OG. You could probably sell that at a bookstore for a lot of money. <laughs> totally kidding. Uh, my writing's all in it. <laughs> my Don't private sell it thoughts. Don't bookstore. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Scratch that. Um, so the story behind this is I always wanted a way to develop new habits, um, have a systematic way of looking at things when it came to my own health and wellness. And so over the years, I have put together different techniques and tools to be able to do that. And I had previously used a journal um, called the Best Self Journal. And that was kind of an inspiration because using the Best Self Journal, they designed it as a 13-week process where you took a quarter of the year and you would plan out what your goals were, you would break them down into action steps, and then they would have these daily pages to help you actualize, okay, what are the micro actions that lead into those actions to get to those goals and that kind of thing. And I love that concept of having 13 weeks to really set out at a particular goal and look at where we want to accomplish or what we want to accomplish in our wellness over that period of time. Because a lot of clients that you and I work with come to us and they've got a lot going on. And sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming to think, oh, I got to change my diet and I got to change my sleep. And now I have to like detox my home. And what does that entail? And all of those things can be really overwhelming and daunting. And so if we were able to break it down into an easier way of doing it in a shorter period of time, how could we make that process easy and how could we customize it for what we needed? Um, And I would say that, you know, it, it turned into way more than just action steps and goals. Like that's where it started. The concept started. But then I started to incorporate some of the mindset and the identity and some of the spiritual work that I've been trained in. And so uh, what got created is what's called the Wellness Optimizing Journal. And it literally is that. It's a 13-week 
experience for somebody to go through to identify what it is that they want to work on in their wellness and how they can establish the habits and the identity and the beliefs and the thoughts and all of those things that go along with it, as well as, um, you know, track their meal plans and their exercise plans and things like that. So it's it's got a lot power packed into it. And so for those who are not on the video, this thing is a good like inch thick hardbound companion. So it's a little hefty, but that's how yeah. that came to be. Well, I think, you know, because I remember when you were making it, you're like, what do you think? Should it be hardbound? Like, you know, hardback? Should it be paperback? And I actually like that it is more of a book because it feels more like a book because it's more sturdy. And so like 13 weeks, you might be traveling at that point or you want to feel like it's something that's durable. So I actually like that it's built like this because it it almost feels more sacred to me, too. Of like you're opening up this like thing that's holding all these goals and these visions and this progress and it's amazing. So I actually like that component of it. But can you explain how is this laid out? Because when you do look at it, there there the pages are color coded. But how do you have this laid out? Like what is this experience supposed to be like for people in the 13 weeks? Yeah. So great question. So in the very beginning of it, we have what's called a wellness assessment and. There's, there's guidance pages throughout the journal to help you use it, but that, that assessment kind of breaks down, and I'll show a picture here on the video, but it breaks down these different areas of wellness that I felt were really important. So it's not just about nourishing, hydration, sleep, et cetera. It's all about, it's also about our breath, our circadian rhythm. It's about our quiet time, our joy that we have in our life, all of those things. And by doing the assessment wheel, we color it in, you know, and, and we identify some of the areas that might need more support or might need more work. So it's a way to help somebody break down their wellness goals in terms of identifying what might be currently not getting as much attention as it might need. And then also writing out a vision of what is life going to look like after the 13 weeks, like, what am I going to accomplish? Because you and I both know that anything that we set our minds out to achieve or accomplish, if we don't have a clear vision of what that looks like, we're, it's going to be really hard to understand what stepping stones we need to put into place. So that's important that we start there. And then from there, breaking that into three separate goals. So the journal has that broken into three separate goals so that you can have a monthly focus. So each month has its own focus of, for example, I want to incorporate breath work. Breath work was an area that, you know, showed up on my assessment wheel. And so if I want to incorporate breath work, it's not going to be as simple as just like sitting down and doing breath work each day. I might have to learn a couple of techniques. I might have to try certain things. I might have to experiment with different times of the day. I might be getting interrupted by my kids while I'm doing breath work. Like I might have to, you know, change things around. And so using that monthly goal as a way to have that particular focus. And then as you progress through the journal, there are what I call weekly pages and daily pages. And the weekly pages allow you to sit down and set an intention, both from a biological standpoint, but also a mental, emotional standpoint. So you can set those intentions for the week. Um, there's some space if you're a planner, right? There's some space to figure out when you're going to do your meal planning or when you're going to do your movement, those kinds of things that for a lot of us are the last thing to go on our calendar, right? When they should be the first thing to go in the calendar. And then there are also these daily pages where you can now incorporate what are you going to do from a daily basis? What are you noticing that's going well? What are you grateful for? What are your rituals both in the morning and the evening? It helps you be able to select those things and customize those things to yourself. So that's how it is set up to start somebody off with. Yeah. And I love that you started talking about the vision because it is really easy to say, oh, I a very popular one. I want to lose weight in 13 weeks. Okay. That sounds really great, but like, how do you actually get there? Because that's where people I think fall apart. At least that's where I do. Like I can, I know exactly what I want, but the steps to get there is hard. And so I really like that this is broken down of you have a weekly, like it says weekly mindset, 
And then it goes through, like, I'm just reading from it. It says, how are my thoughts this week? What have you noticed? You know, what are some things I need to let go of? What are emotions that are affecting me? Like, it helps you audit yourself in that way heading into that week. But then also you have then the, the daily breakdown, which is important. So I'm thinking, like, and this is one of the thoughts I had when I first got it of, like, well, how can I incorporate this into my day? So what are ways that you would recommend somebody, instead of opening this up starting week one, maybe doing two days of the weekly pages and then forgetting about it. Like what is a way that you would recommend this being implemented into their habits or their daily routine? Yeah, that's a really great question because oftentimes when you're starting with something new, it doesn't always get easily picked up, right? So um, one trick that I have used even with my own copy of the journal is having it be underneath my toothbrush right? So this is called habit stacking, where we take a habit that is already kind of automatic. We don't even think about it. We wake up, we go to the bathroom, we start brushing our teeth, etc. But because it is underneath the toothbrush, that's kind of (laughs) weird in a sense, right? It's a pattern interrupt. It's intentionally weird because I want to remind myself, oh yeah, I want to sit down and fill out one of the pages or I want to sit down and fill out the assessment wheel, whatever that intention is for you on that day. But taking a small habit of, you know, brushing my teeth, I can literally flip it open and start thinking about how I would be um, filling it out as I'm working on my 30 second quadrants in my mouth. Right. And then once I'm done, I literally will take the pen, sit on the bathroom floor This is how I do it. Um, Sit on the bathroom floor. It's not very, you know, uh, grandiose or whatever. I don't have, okay, here's the reality. I'm on the bathroom floor, you guys. I I don't have candles out. I don't have soft music playing. (laughs) I don't have my, you know, yoga, like little pad that I sit on, right? None of that. I'm literally on the bathroom floor and I'm giving myself, okay, five minutes and I'm just going to write it out. And that's how I start a brand new habit with something like this. And given that it's got extra sections in terms of, you know, the, the vision piece or setting out the monthly goals, that kind of thing. Sometimes I'll set aside time on a particular day of the week. It might be Sunday for some people. Sunday doesn't work out. It's already packed with stuff. So it might be a Wednesday evening. Like just pick a random day where you're giving yourself the time and the grace to be able to sit down and and sort through that. And what's cool about the way that this is designed is you don't have to do the vision or the assessment or the goals to start with. You literally can open it up to a daily page and just start using it. Yeah. And it's my intention that you don't fill out every single prompt either. You just fill out what's calling to you in that moment. And so that's that's how I envision people using it. And if you want mm-hmm. to, you can go through the whole 13-week process, totally disciplined, great gold stars to you. But it also can be very flexible in the way that you use it. Yeah. Well, and when you do, so I'm I'm kind of, you know, get into the last of these pages. So you have the weekly pages, you have the daily pages, but there's also other sections of this as well that um, you didn't bring up. Like there's a, we see like the, gra- okay, we see the daily pages, like gratitude, things like that. But then let's say you do get to the end of it yeah. and you're like, okay, great. What, how does this kind of recap? Like what is there, is there anything that kind of pulls us all together for you? Cause sometimes- totally. Like we've talked about this with clients, you reach a goal and it's like, okay, great, did that. And then you just move on. But this journal doesn't really allow you to do that because there's these spots for you to kind of like, there's this kind of nice end cap to it. So what does that look like? So um, again, for the people that are not on the video, what you will see when you get it in your hands is you can see this color coding. So the illustrator that I worked with We did this intentionally so you can easily see the different weeks, but then there's this green section in the back. And the green section in the back is something that I call extra boosts. And you can use those exercises at any point during your 13 week journey, or you can do them at the end. Um, Those help with some of the beliefs around what is possible for us. 
And if we are needing to develop confidence or if we're needing to get rid of an old belief, there's a transformation exercise in there. Like it's really, they were important enough in my own transformation and in my own use every day to include here for people who might be getting stuck or whatever. So you can use those at any point in time, but also at the very end of it, you get to do the reassessment again. And there's two reasons why. Number one, if you're like me and you're achievement oriented, you have gotten into the habit of accomplishing something and immediately moving on to the next thing, like not giving yourself any uh, accolades, not letting anybody else give you accolades, um, just kind of like sweeping it all under the rug as if nobody noticed and going on to the next thing. That's great. But it also like we want to make sure that people are celebrating themselves because this is a big deal. Like if you're going to work on your wellness yeah. or if you're going to work on any goal in life, it's a big deal that you're accomplishing th these things. So having some time to just celebrate that and reflect like reflection is a very um, not oftenly used, but a very valuable exercise to do for yourself so that you can reflect and see what's worked, what hasn't worked, et cetera. And then I give you a, a, um, the assessment wheel one more time, right? So that you can see your progress. It's, it gives you a way to measure A plus B. So Evie and I, we love functional lab testing because we get data points. And when we do a lab in the beginning of working with somebody and then repeat the same lab at the end, we've got data to show the progress. And so the assessment wheel, you can think of it as your own personal lab and you can redo the assessment wheel and see areas that have gotten more attention. And maybe some areas might have fallen off in that process. So it's kind of about it's kind of showing ourselves how can we dance with all those areas and keep them in balance over time. So then from there, if you want to, you can pick up another one of these journals and rinse and repeat the same process for another quarter, another set of three goals, if you will. Yeah. So that's how I designed it as being a total encompassing experience across the 13 weeks. Yeah. And it definitely is. I mean, I'm looking at the assessment now and I want to emphasize that I do love that there are things on here that maybe it because I think someone might listen to this and think, well, I don't necessarily have a health goal or I'm not someone who has like these health related things or what they would standardly think as health. But the reality is, is that you have things on here around mindset, beliefs, like your social life. Do you have any quiet time for yourself? You know, how much joy do you feel like you're experiencing your sleep, like sunrise, that stuff? is different than like, you know, how many grams of protein are you getting, which that might be someone's, yeah, okay. that might be part of someone's goal and like nothing's wrong with that. But I like this because it is a really more holistic view of yourself. So it, it this really does, what I'm trying to say is this can be used by anybody. It's not someone who like, this mm -hmm. isn't just like a health and fitness tracker. This is something yeah. for you as an entire person. And what I like, because what I noticed in myself and what I do notice with clients is that let's say my I don't know, let's say my my um my quiet time was on the lower side when I first did it. And then let's say that I have, you know, I pick some goals that aren't necessarily around quiet, they're around the other areas of the of the wheel of the assessment. But then quiet goes up too, even though I didn't have an emphasis on it. So then for me personally, I was like, oh, it's interesting that when I place an emphasis on my entire life and on, you know, when I really focus in on making myself better in this, this, and this area, everything else shifts for the positive too. So it was a good reinforcement for me of like, you don't really, you don't need a million little goals. Like you need, right. you know, maybe two to three and everything else is going to shift in that direction as well. Yeah. I'm really glad you brought that up because I think the reason why it's called wellness optimizing journal and not health optimizing journal or not exercise optimizing journal, right? Is because I've come to realize that our overall wellness is way more than just the biology. And I think we've talked about this quite a bit. And, you know, to incorporate our emotional body, our spiritual body, our energetic body, and the physical body all in one, that's what incorporates wellness. And you and I have seen this time and time again with ourselves and with our clients, which is 
if we're not addressing some of the emotional stuff, the physical stuff is going to stay. No matter how clean our diet is, no matter how dialed in our macros are, that is the the body will stay there if we haven't addressed the emotional side of it or if we haven't addressed the joy side of it, for example. Um, and so that's why I decided to call it a wellness optimizing journal because that that's how we do it. it we got to encompass all of those at the same yeah. time. And I love that because I've told my friends about it and like, this is honestly a great gift idea too for people. And I know that, you know, we're kind of in that season right now of gift giving mm -hmm. and talking about that. But that's the thing is you might finish your 13 weeks. You could absolutely get another one for yourself, or maybe you just go off of what you learned in this one. But this is nice because this can be gifted or utilized for anybody else. Because again, if they're not, they don't have a physical goal they're working towards, they still have something that is going to be that can be approached the same way using the process that this journal gives. So I like that. It, it doesn't really feel like there's this big like niche of like, oh, this only applies to this type of person. I could never gift this to my mom. It's like, well, of course yeah. I could because there's areas in here that she's totally going to be, you know, wanting to work on or doing already because it's very much a human experience, like all the things you talk about in here. Yeah. So I like that yeah. too, is it doesn't feel like I can't share this with anybody else. Yeah. I mean, that was something that was really important for me is that this was applicable to more than just the people in health and wellness, right? Because we're all human and we all need to take care of this human body that we're in while we're on this adventure. And, you know, why not have it be applicable to other people and have it be something that you can gift to somebody else, especially if they're just trying to make a simple change of like, maybe they're just trying to not eat out as much. They're trying mm -hmm. to learn how to cook at home. Like you could use this to help you stay on track for that. But I yeah. guarantee that you'll get a lot more <laughs> out of yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm curious about your personal experience with it. I know you, you know, you did this because you know, it's powerful, but and what are some beliefs that maybe you've that have come up for you or that have, like there's been a light that's been shining on you now since you did make this regarding the journal? Because you and I have had conversations about the journal of like, hey, this is freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we talking about this more? What's going on here? Yeah. All right. <laughs> let's, so full, let's full disclosure, vulnerability time. Um. So what's interesting is uh, there's an adage of like how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? And I talked about the overachievement piece and whenever I would achieve something. So when I was in aviation, for example, you go through a bunch of different tests. You get your private pilot's license, then you get your instrument, then you get your commercial, et cetera. And so each time it's a big deal because you're doing this like practical test with an examiner and it's nerve wracking. But I would always like pass that exam and like schedule my training for the next phase immediately, like the next day, like I was in such a rush and it, it's just one of those habits that I've gotten in is like not acknowledging that I'm just constantly looking for the next achievement. So fast forward, I've done a lot of work around that. I've started to like change that belief around and, you know, recognize my accomplishments and try and s talk about it, or share it with my friends. Like I wasn't even sharing it with friends. Right. Um, so what's interesting is that this project to embark on creating this journal took, took probably, I would say 10 or 11 months. So myself and Mac, Mac is the person who, if you guys don't know who she is, she was interviewed on one of our podcast episodes before on presence. And so we'll link that in the show notes. Mac is a wonderful creative and beautiful illustrator. And I fell in love with her illustrations and I contacted her and said, Hey, I have this project. <laughs> Do you want to work on this with me? And we did. And so one of the things that is so lovely about this is that it's got these beautiful illustrations all throughout. But that process of developing this took 10 or 11 months. And lo and behold, it's ready to go. People can buy it. And what do I do? I start working on the next project. <laughs> like I stumbled straight into that old belief pattern which I laugh at because, of course, this is what the brain does. It likes to go down that path of least resistance and do the things that we're used to doing. So 
This episode today is me actively working on changing that programming and that patterning within myself and letting people know about it. Because if they don't know about it, they're not going to get the benefit of it. So I got to talk about it. And (laughs) Abby likes to remind me, I got to talk about it more than one time. Yeah. Once is never. (laughs) That's right. That's right. And that applies to a lot of things. It does. You know, it's it's not like we put an ad out in the classifieds and it's one and done. It's not like that at all. So uh, so we're changing that right now here live. I am changing my neural patterning and I'm letting you guys know that there is this journal that I've created that I love deeply. And I think a lot of people will benefit from it. And the feedback that we've gotten in this journal has been reaffirming for sure. Like it's been life changing for a lot of people. And uh, so, yeah, I would love it if you guys check it out. And if it doesn't yeah. resonate with you, like then forward it to somebody it does or gift it this holiday season because it's a great gift. Why not? It is. It really is a great gift because there are some friends that like, I mean, I've had this conversation with some of my friends where it's like, we're at that age where it's like, if we want something, we just kind of buy it for ourselves. Like, I don't need it or like, I don't need a gift card to this or that. And so, Mm -hmm. but this is really meaningful. And this to me is like, you see me as a person, like you see that I'm growth oriented. You see that I have some stuff I want to work on and you see that this is a resource that can help me with that. So I really, I think that's powerful in gifting something like this. And I'm glad you're talking more about it because It is powerful. I mean, clients get this, like clients love it. People have bought it. They love it. You got good feedback. And so this is something that should be shared more because I mean, just to be very frank, there are journals out there that are being sold, you know, nonstop that are half as good as this. And like, that just seems kind of stupid to me, honestly, of like, this needs to be out there. And, you know, this is, this is solid. This is, this is golden. And so we need this in more people's hands. And so I figured this was a good time to talk about this because one, it is holiday season. People are, you know, thinking of what do I buy? What do I get this? You know, whatever. Or it's like, I want to get, I want to do something for myself this year. Get it for yourself. Do that. Totally. And you know, you're, you're absolutely right. You can, you can pay nine bucks to get a planner and what you're gonna get blank calendar pages. This is not blank calendar pages. This is, uh, what did we end up with? 333 pages of pretty Mm -hmm. amazing stuff. Right. And so I think don't let the size intimidate you because the daily pages are repeated. (laughs) So yeah, it's not like you're getting in there and it's like a little tiny font. Like this is beautiful. There's space. Like you can doodle. Like it's one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's really the point is that you can use this however you want. You can flow through it however you want. And if you need structure, the structure is there. And that was really the intention behind it. And I will say that um, we have a community, it's called the Optimized Wellness Community, and that's a membership community. And one of the benefits of membership is that for your first month on that community, starting December 1st, you get a copy, a physical copy of the journal. And what else is really cool is part of that community, you get the uh, course, there's a video course that is accompanying to this to go a little bit deeper for you. And that is also available to community members. So yeah, it's, uh, I really wanted it to be an experience and it has turned into Mm -hmm. this total experience. So an experience within the physical hard copy itself, but then also we've got this community experience too, if that's something that you choose to do. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that's amazing. And people are loving that experience. I I think it's great that we get to connect with people who aren't quite ready to become clients or just maybe, you know, are not at that point, but we still get to be able to, you know, like have conversations and do little events and things like that with that, with those types of people. Um, One other thing too, I actually thought about while you were saying that is the journal, because you were saying, you know, you could go buy a $9 planner that has blank pages Because I think that's what kind of intimidates people from journaling or maybe not intimidates, but holds them back is they're like, I don't even know where to start. Because I've had clients say that because I'll, you know, when we talk about parasympathetic activities or unwinding, I'm like, well, do you journal? Do you do that? 
And, you know, the response is, I just don't even know what to say, or I don't know how to get started. Well, you don't, that's not a worry with this journal. Like you, this is there for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't have to. so many questions in the journal and prompts for you to think about that you don't have to worry about what to write. You know, you can just mull on on the question while you're brushing your teeth, right? And then you can just write it down once you've like thought through it as you're brushing your teeth. At least that's how I do it. So. Yeah. 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 It's less daunting because it's not like, okay, well, I'm going to journal tonight. Let me think of what I'm going to need to journal. It's like, no, let me just open up the book. The book tells me what to journal. And that Mm -hmm. actually then spirals into, oh, well, hmm, I didn't realize I felt this way or, oh, maybe I should address that. Or so it's nice to have that too, of something that you're not necessarily having to like think of on your own. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So Thank you so much for prompting me to talk a little bit more about this and start to raise some awareness. And um, I'm excited to have more people get this in their hands and hear what their experience has been, because that ultimately was the intent and purpose. So here we are. Yeah, well, I'm excited. I'm glad that you shared it. And thank you for creating this. Seriously, it's it is very powerful and I'm excited for people to have access to it and to um, start to utilize it. So Whatever your experience is, definitely share that with Terea because she needs to know like how amazing this is and just reinforce that. So thank Thank you for sharing and and for also getting vulnerable too. Yeah, you're welcome. And then if you share that with me, I promise you, I will open it up to my version of the, of the brag book exercise that's in here and add it to that. So yeah, that's awesome. It goes full circle. You guys, it totally goes full circle. It's, It's really cool. So yes. All right. So Terea will be adding the link to get, purchase this, you know, link of how to check this out and um, access this journal. And then again, if you have any questions, if you want to hear what my experience has been, feel free to message me. Or if you want to talk to Terea directly about it, do that. But again, thank you, Terea. Yeah. And You're thanks welcome. everyone for listening. Feel free to share this episode with anyone that you think could be benefited from learning about the journal um, or just hearing more yeah. about Terea's process in creating this. And we will all talk to you in the next episode. Sounds good. See ya. Hey, thanks for joining us for this episode of the Wildly Optimized Wellness Podcast. If you are ready to dig deeper into your health, stop playing the wackest symptom game, start testing to get better guidance, you can find more about Terea at tereyarodriguez.com and you can find Evie at holisticallyrestored.com. Want to peek into what it's like to work with us? Come join us at our Optimized Wellness community. You can find the invitation link in the show notes below. And if you have a question for the show, you can submit your question under the podcast section of TereaRodriguez.com. Finally, if you found something helpful in this episode, don't forget to leave a review, hit that follow button, or share it with a friend. They're going to love that you thought of them. Until next time, see you outside.